Welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. Up this week, I've got a Matchbox Superfast 1600 DL Volkswagen. This model was sent to me by one of my viewers, uh, Scott Wien, out of North Carolina. And Scott was able to help me find a couple other goodies that I was looking for to complete some holes in my collection. And to say thanks, I asked him to send me something that he wanted to have restored. And this is what he sent me. Um, so as you can see, this model has been uh, severely overpainted. Um, I, I can't really tell. There's at least one, maybe two different colors over the top of this. Uh, someone's got a little creative with the interiors, turning the uh, upholstery red. Um, and this model's really just a mess, but we're going to strip it down. Um, this will be a complete uh, bare strip and uh, repaint. And Scott's only direction to me was to do something that Lesney would not have done and that he liked green. And so with that in mind, um, we're going to take on this Resto Mod. As with any uh, restoration, the uh, first thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and drill out these rivet posts. Um, I like to use my smaller bit first. And, you know, when the, the factory uh, pressed out these rivets, they, they kind of end up with this low spot right in the middle from, uh, from the mushrooming tool that was used to spread those out. So um, I like to use that low spot as kind of a... Uh, self-centering piece for my small drill bits and I drill out that center hole um, all the way down as deep as I can get it first before I'll drill out the mushroomed end on these um, that's just my method seems to work a little bit better for me helps me keep all my drill bits centered all the way down that post um, even as I go to a bigger bit with my small holes done, I'll switch it up to a larger bit that's just slightly larger than the, the mushroomed end of my rivets. And this is where I want to take it really slow. Um, this is a Zamac metal, this you know casting metal on this. It's really soft. It doesn't take very much, and I don't want to overdo it. With the rivets drilled, I should be able to apply just a little even pressure um, with a, I'm just using my tweezers, and um, that will pop that base up loose of the original casting. So this base actually looks pretty good. Um, the little plastic suspension piece on the inside is in great shape and still has a lot of nice springiness to it. Um, the back end here you can see I got a little over paint still, um, that's bleed over. I can see some blue and some black, so I know that this has been painted, over painted at least twice. Looking at the wheels on this, they actually look like they're in pretty decent shape for a super fast set. Um, uh, you can see I've got a couple small spots on the chrome there where I think I'm going to have to probably touch up um, but in order to do a true frame off resto mod on this I'm gonna try to remove these wheels and axles um, and I, I want to keep them intact I want to reuse these original axles uh, they're a little rusty but um, I'll soak them in a, a little white vinegar solution and that'll clear up that rust um, and I, I don't want to have to watch out for them while I do all the rest of the work and I don't want anything to happen to these original wheels and axles because the plan right now anyway is that I am going to try to reuse these. So um, as long as I'm being careful it, it does look like these are going to come off fairly easily and hopefully they go back on just as easily when I get to the end of this. So 
So taking a look at this custom interior, I can't really tell what kind of paint this is. Um, it's fairly thick on here, but it does seem like it will come loose or it will come off. Um, and so not knowing what it is uh, makes it a little more difficult to decide how I want to proceed with taking that off. Um, I also want to get the windscreen here. You can really see the multiple layers of overpaint. I think I've got blue and black and red on this windscreen. Um, and I have not been able to locate a reproduction one of these. So my plan right now is to try to work with this original one and uh, get it cleaned up. So you can see from the inside of the casting, uh, the original color on this for sure was a uh, metallic pink. Um, and I can see it on the insides of the doors as well as the insides of the roof. So that is, I think, a fairly common color for this casting. And uh, all of my research that I've, I've done looking at um, this super fast line, uh, this was a, a pretty common color. Um, so I don't feel bad about changing this up at all. Um, the original door spring is still here. It's intact. And it seems to be working pretty well, so I'm going to remove it just so that nothing happens while I strip down the castings. And uh, it should be fairly easy to just put that back in, reinstall it um, once I get everything stripped down and cleaned. So with the posts sanded down and threaded, I can go ahead and do a test fit on my screws. Um, I always like installing my screws before I do the strip and paint. Um, gives me something that I can uh, put my uh, little forcep tools on and hold on to them. For the plastic interiors, um, I'm going to try a method that you've seen previously on the channel. And that is I'm going to give it a good soak in some brake fluid. Um, I'll probably try this on the windscreen as well. So here you see I've got the main casting um, back after a couple coats with my citrus strip. Um, this casting seems to have a lot of little nooks and crannies with just some residual paint. And so I'm just using my little dental pick tools to get into some of those tighter areas and take off any of that that is still left on the casting. So with the body and the doors stripped, um, I'm going to reinstall the spring that allows the doors to open and close. Um, I do plan on painting this model with the doors in place. Uh, from everything that I've found, all my research on how the uh, Matchbox factory originally painted these castings. Uh, they would have been mounted to a rotating spindle in the middle um, with the doors positioned open. And that spindle would have been uh, attached to a conveyor belt that would have uh, brought it through a paint booth, um, both moving and rotating spinning at the same time. So I plan on doing the same. Uh, I'm going to use my method of hot gluing a uh, aperture to the underside of the roof to give me something to hold on to. And I'll position the doors open and I'll spray this model with my airbrush um, all at the same time with the doors open and intact.
So I really was concerned about using anything too abrasive on the base. The base is in good shape. I just need to get some of this uh, over paint off of it. And since the brake fluid's been doing such a good job on these other parts, um, I'm going to stick with it. I'm just going to soak these a little bit and see if I can get whatever that uh, over paint is to come loose. So now that I'm prepped for paint, I've got to make a couple big decisions. You know, originally these uh, models were super fast. They were done in a heavy metallic pink color. Um, but, you know, Scott gave me direction that he liked green. And I thought, what better color green for a little British die cast than uh, a true old school British racing green? And so that's what I've got. But I wanted to stay somewhat true to the super fast line and that model. And so my British Racing Green has some heavy metallic flake in it. I wanted to keep that same sparkle that the original casting had and kind of stay, you know, true to the spirit of what the super fast line was. So after a little more time soaking and some very patient and gentle scrubbing with my Q-tips, I was able to get all of the overpaint uh, residue off of my original base. My wheels and axles went into a little uh, white vinegar soak just to remove a little bit of that surface rust that was on the original axles. And I'm going to put them back together with a little patience, the exact same way that I took them apart. Um, there's these little tabs down in here, and I want to be really careful that I don't snap any of those off, but um, once I get the axle positioned right, just a, a little firm, gentle pressure pushing down will snap them right into place. These original super fast wheels are really in pretty good shape. Um, there's just a few small little areas that I wanted to touch up and to do that I'm just using my Molotow liquid chrome pen um, and I'm applying it straight from the pen. So now that we've got all the paint off of our windscreen um, I've got to make a decision about whether or not to try to polish this out and uh, the front of the windscreen it does look like there is a slight crack in it um, it's not too bad. It's not terribly noticeable, and I think I can live with it. The interior pieces came out really, really nice. Um, all of that nice white plastic came back, um, and uh, w there's hardly any uh, evidence of the red. I think it was nail polish uh, that was used on the inside of this. Um, my base is completely reassembled. All my chrome has been touched up. And this is ready to go back together. So because I use enamel, um, I always like to give my castings a couple of days to dry and kind of cure out. And uh, this one just turned out exceptionally well. I'm really, really happy with it. I did end up doing uh, three total coats of the green, uh, as well as two coats of clear over the top. Um, and I use an airbrush set to do that um, because I don't want it to get too thick and uh, I, I don't want to obstruct any of the original details on these castings. Um, before I assemble this completely back together, I do want to do a little test fit uh, just to make sure that my windscreen still fits nice, that the interior snaps into place, and to see what it's going to look like because you know, this is the first time I'm seeing the car go back together. And that looks like a pretty good fit, but honestly, I'm really not digging the bright white interior. When I think of uh, little British sports cars, especially in the racing green, they always had a brown leather interior. So I think that might be a, a little bit better direction to take this interior piece. So what I've done is I've taken a little bit of my uh, oil brushers dark brown 
and I did a really light wash over the original interior plastics. Um, and then I came back and I washed most all of it off. Um, I just used a, a little Q-tip to kind of dab at. And all in all, I'm really happy with how this has turned out. So without further ado, let's take a look at our finished results. So I am really, really excited about how this little car turned out. Um, I was able to add a, a few of the details that never would have been there uh, from the original factory. You can see I've done the, uh, the chrome on the back and uh, the yellow on the license plate. I was able to uh, pick up some of the really fine casting details, the door handles and um, the hood ornament on this. And I'm absolutely in love with this color. I'm so glad that uh, Scott made the suggestion of doing something other than the metallic pink. And uh, I hope that he likes um, the, the direction that I've taken this with the Brit British racing green color and the brown leather interior. And I want to say thanks just once again to Scott for... Um, helping me fill some holes in my collection and giving me the opportunity to restore this great little casting. Um, this is going to get wrapped up and popped in the mail and on its way to you. Um, probably by the time I post this video, it'll, it'll be in transit. Um, so shoot me a message and I'll get you the tracking numbers on this. So that about does it for this fun little resto mod. And uh, thanks for joining me this week for another vintage diecast restoration.